Hello everybody. Let's find the electric potential due to a continuous charge distribution. The figure below shows a thin plastic rod of length L equals 12 centimeters and uniform positive charge Q equals 56.1 femtocoulombs lying on an x-axis. With V equals zero at infinity, find the electric potential at point P1 on the x-axis at distance d equals 2.50 centimeters from the rod. So this is the figure that we have here. This is a figure that I drew ahead of time that I will explain in just a little bit. Um, for now, let's go ahead and write down what we are given. So we are given that the length of the rod is 12.0 centimeters which is of course 0 0.12 meters. Uh, the charge Q is 56.1 femto coulombs and again femto is 10 to the minus 15 so this is 56.1 times 10 to the, to the minus 15 coulombs. And D is 2.50 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.025 meters. All right, so in a previous problem, we did, we found the net electric potential due to discrete charges, meaning uh, charges, you know, meaning a group of charges. There were, you know, there could be four, five, six, seven, whatever. Um, it just means that you can count them. You can count the individual particles. <clears throat> um, but in this case, for a continuous charge distribution as here, there's just way too many particles to count. Way, way, way too many. 10 to the 23 or or you know, or even a lot more uh, particles in here. <clears throat> so what do we do? We still do the same idea, sort of, where we, you know, kind of add a whole bunch of charges. But in this case, for a continuous one, uh, the trick is to uh, make very small segments, call them dQ, and add up all the dQs to the length of the rod. Now, of course, here in my diagram, DQ is a lot bigger than it should be because obviously we need to be able to see and visualize it. Uh, <clears throat> but DQ is infinitesimally uh, small. Very, very, very small. Um, <clears throat> it turns out for a line of charge, For a line of charge, I'll write it in red. It turns out that dQ is equal to lambda times dx. And lambda is called the linear charge density. And it's simply the charge divided by the length of the continuous object. Um, so it's more, it's like a sp amount of spread. It, it tells you how spread out the charges are throughout the entire uh, rod. In this case, it's a rod. Okay, and we do know Q and L. Um, <clears throat> so for a continuous charge distribution, we have that the potential is equal to k times the integral of dq over r. 
like I said, it's kind of like it's it's sort of similar to what we had before with discrete charges, except now since the charges are infinitesimally small, to add all of them up, we would need to integrate. That's what integration is all about: adding up a whole bunch of very, very, very tiny amount of thing things, and adding up all the very tiny amounts of charges called dQ. <clears throat> Okay, I should also say that the x in dx is just a placeholder. Um, in this case, we use dx because the, the rod is along the x-axis. If instead the rod was along the y-axis, this would be dy. If it was along the z-axis, you would use dz. Just to kind of clear that up a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure what this integral should be. So v is equal to k, which is just a constant, the integral of dq. For a line of charge, such as a rod, we have lambda dx. And lambda is this q over l. So I can say dq is q, the charge, divided by l, the length of the rod, times dx. This is over r. Uh, so what's r? Well, r is the separation distance between p1, the point where we would like to find the electric potential, and dq. Well, this would be r. In this case, however, it's not constant. The value of r changes depending where dq is, because dq ranges from 0 to, uh, to l, the length of the rod. Um, so it depends on the position that dq is at. It depends on, you know, x. And we can see that r, in this case, is equal to d plus x. We have to add this distance d plus whatever value of x that dq happens to be. So the integration so far is q over l dx all divided by d plus x. Now what are the bounds? The integration needs a bound. Well, what values does dq range from? Well, dq goes from x equals 0 to x equals l. And we, and we are in it with respect to x. So x, the left bound is 0, the right bound is l. So this would be the bounds of the integration. Okay, so before we integrate, let's take out q over l. Over l. Let's write a little bit nicer like this. kq over l from 0 to l of dx over d plus x. I took out q over l outside the integral since q over l is a constant constants come out of the integral. <coughs> so now we just need to solve this. <coughs> um, this is a relatively simple integration. This ends up being kq over l. This integration is the natural log of d plus x evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals l. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. So we have kq over l times the natural log of d plus l minus the natural log of d plus 0. So well, this just becomes kq over l, the natural log of d plus l minus the natural log of d. <clears throat> Before I start plugging in some numbers here, I can simplify this using a natural logarithm rule for subtraction. 
when you're subtracting two logarithms, it is just the arguments that are being divided by each other. So in this case, we can write this as d plus l over d. So getting from here to here is just simply by rules of logarithms. All right, so now we just have to plug in the values. And yeah, when doing these types of problems, you should always plug in the numbers at the very end. Um, the reason why is because, well, uh, you know, now if you were given different values of d, q, and l, you can just, well not k because k is a constant, but if you're given different values of q, l, and d, you could just go straight from here. It allows you to see each step of the way that you went. So always plug numbers in at the very end. So k, 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Uh, Q is 56.1 times 10 to the minus 15 coulombs. This whole thing is divided by L, which is 0 0.12 meters. Then we do the natural log of D plus L, so 0 0.025 meters plus 0 0.12 meters divided by D which is 0 0.025 meters just able to fit it on the paper cool so after plugging in those numbers and you know shoving them into your calculator we find that the potential is 0 0.0007388 volts, which we can write in scientific notation as 7.39 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. I decided just to keep only two significant, you know, three significant figures in total. Um, or we can even, using prefixes, call this 7.39 millivolts, whatever you prefer. Most of the time I've noticed that the answers are usually given with a prefix such as, you know, millivolts. Scientific notation works just as well. All right, so that's it for this problem. I hope this helped you. And like I said, just make sure to just plug in the values at the very end and you'll be good to go. All right, have a nice day.